wouldn't know what to look at, but these hills are just a couple hours drive from Mexico City, one of the world's biggest urban conurbations. This is the transatlantic volcanic belt, but it's not the volcanoes we've come to see. I'm almost to the summit of Bald Peak, and you can tell I'm quite out of breath. We are about 3,000 meters above sea level. The air is thin, it's quite cold, but we are beginning to see monarch butterflies. Every winter, millions of butterflies fly for around two months from Canada and the US to a few patches of high altitude forest here in Mexico. Most are located in the state of Michoacan, but this place is slightly east of there in Mexico state. Cerro Pelon is the least touristy site and somewhere you can truly be alone with these creatures. Wow. Normally we're not allowed to get this close, but from this distance, I hope you can see, there are millions of monarchs clustered in black clumps on these fir trees. What I find absolutely amazing about this insect is they travel 4,000 kilometers from Canada, United States, down to this particular forest. It's the longest migration undertaken by any insect. Scientists only recently discovered that they use the sun to navigate to these same few reserves every year, where they rest, feed, and then find a mate. In recent years, the populations have dwindled thanks to the destruction of habitats in the US and Canada and deforestation here in Mexico. One study says the numbers have gone down by 84% in the last 20 years. The fear is this, one more bad winter and the entire colony could be gone. It's been really bad, you know. Two years ago, we have uh, this snowstorm. They kill a lot of butterflies, you know. It was it was really really sad to see like um, to see these clusters, you know, the way we saw that they are. Mm -hmm. And 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 but those butterflies, they like dead, and they still like they look like they um, hibernating, but they're not hibernating anymore. They like just dead. They're frozen. Yeah, frozen because the weather. And what happens if there's another terrible winter like that? Well, I hope it will not be the end of the butterflies, you know, because it will be bad, you know, the, the population went down a lot. The village at the foot of the hill depends largely on the butterflies for its existence. It's tiny, though the people are instantly welcoming. <laughs> there is just one B&B &B run by Huel and his American wife, Ellen, which they set up in an effort to make day trippers stay here for a bit longer. And wouldn't you know it, the one local restaurant is run by Puel's mom, Rosa. Yeah. You guys have an avocado. And why do you guys love the butterflies? Why are you here doing well, what you're doing? Well, you know, like, um, well, that's how I met. That's Ellen. how we met. That's how we met. <laughs> we met but, the storm of butterflies. But <laughs> anyway, you know, like, my, my dad, he was a forest ranger, so he just retired from been in those mountains for like over 30 years, so. When we met, there was nothing here. People came on day trips, people came from far away, they paid outside operators to come here, and none of the money stayed in the community. So really what we've been trying to do with starting our business is have more people come, yeah, stay here, stay in the community, stay longer. And the numbers are much lower than they used to be in the area with the butterflies? You'd see them on the roads flying in like a river, and sometimes we see that in some places, but not as often as I, I think like older people talk about seeing that. I mean, I've, I've only, I've been here for four seasons, so in four seasons it's kind of, it, I mean, it's actually gotten better. The numbers have gotten slightly better in the last four seasons, but it's still, you know, dramatically lower than what it was. Than it used to be. Yeah. 
This is lusher and greener than you might expect from Mexico. A peaceful place to see the migration. And here's a glimmer of hope for the people of Macheros. While numbers are still critically low, the signs from this year and the last is that the worrying decline appears to be stabilizing.